I made an awesome rib roast for Christmas this year, folks. Herb rubbed, dry brined, slow roasted on my Kamado and reverse seared for the nice crispy exterior crust. Slice through this thing, perfectly medium rare. If you want to see more about how I did it, keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back. Being the end of the year, uh, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, for the past several years, you'll notice I tend to do um, one item, in particular a rib roast or a ribeye roast on my Kamado. And uh, I, this, this year was no different. I usually do it uh, for Christmas, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. This year I ended up doing it for Christmas Day and boy it was fun. I had about 10 people over, all family, and uh, we really chowed down on this thing. I mean. I bought almost a 10 pound standing rib roast, rubbed it in some uh, some herbs. I even dry brined it for a change. Of, I haven't done that, so I thought I'd give that a shot this year. Made made some au jus or some drippings with the bones and the, and the fixings and the drippings. And I put this whole uh, this whole spread together with a bunch of sides too, of course, potatoes and uh, and vegetables and other things. It was, and I also made some homemade bread, which I also like to do on my channel sometimes too, right? But it was awesome. So. Without further ado, without yammer on too long, if you want to see how I did this, keep on watching. I have this standing rib roast I got from the store. It was on sale at about, I think it was like five or six bucks a pound, which was a pretty good price. And I now I realize why, because there's a lot of fat coming through here, which I paid for, which I'm going to be cutting off here. And it's also a bone-in ribeye uh, because of the bone here. So um, I paid for the bone too. So I see why I got a good price on it, but. I'm going to have to go ahead and cut off the fat and uh, I'm thinking about cutting off the uh, the rib bones and putting it in my drip pan later too. So, well, I'll see how this goes. Well, you can see here, I paid a lot of money. Well, I didn't pay a lot of money. I paid a seal price per pound for a lot of fat here. So that was disappointing, but oh well. All right, let's see what we can do about the bone here. Cut it behind the bone to find out where it is. All right, there we go. Once you get it started, from behind the bone and feel out where it is you can start cutting down and it turns in to the meat like this all right so then you can kind of feel now where it goes so it makes it easier now to follow the bone without taking off too much of the meat There we go. So there's the there's the ribs, one, two, three bones, with the meat all in between them. I'm gonna cook this also. Um, this isn't going to get thrown away. This is gonna go into my drip pan to help make some beef stock for the gravy for this thing. Here it is, deboned and defatted basically. So there's this flap here now, and it's kind of this oblong shape. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, or not flip it, but I'm going to fold this over like this. And then I'm going to tie it up with some butcher string. I'm going to cut off the extra string. All right, so there's my rib roast rolled up into a ball. And the reason why I'm doing it, you can see here, the, it's more round now, right? So I tied it up so that it would be round and um, easy to cook evenly all the way around. And it will uh, 
be more homogeneously pink all the way across here or medium rare when I'm done and if it was oblong and flat like that or or oddly shaped part of it would get way done and the other parts wouldn't get any done this way it's more it can be even more evenly cooked all the way through so all right I want to add salt all around this thing pack it on real good all right So I uh, put this thing in a baking dish all night here, overnight. I let it dry brine. I'm going to cover it in, in some plastic wrap probably um, in the fridge. And then we'll be back in the morning and start cooking. It's the next morning and you can see that the uh, the crust of salt is pretty much dissolved into the meat. Uh, melted, got sucked in there, which is what I wanted. So hopefully the salt has reached down further into the meat than just the uh, surface. So now that I got the salt on there, I'm going to go ahead and put on a rub. That I have here that's um, this rub here it's a mixture of chopped garlic like a whole bulb of garlic and a pile full of dried uh, thyme and rosemary that I have along with a couple a uh, handful well, a handful a couple palmfuls of, of black pepper all mixed in together there I didn't add any more salt because the salt is already on the meat or in the meat basically so I'm gonna go ahead and coat the uh, the meat with this. And there we go, folks. Ready to go and put on the grill. This is my drip pan that I'm going to put under my my rib roast. It's basically is what you can see is about a whole onion. Uh, several carrots and celery stalks sliced up along with some fresh thyme uh, I, and let's see and some bay leaves and of course what you're seeing here are the bones that I cut off of the of the rib roast and put it in here as well so I'm gonna cook the bones in here I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid in here to, to get things started and it's going on the grill and I'm gonna add some water I already heated up in the house to get a, a jump start on heating up here I'm just going to just give a little bit of water, just to cover the bottom of the pan a little bit for starters here. Okay, I got the grill heating up indirectly. I got my heat deflector um, for indirect cooking here and my, uh, my drip pan rack here. I'm going to go ahead and put this on just like that. I'm going to add the grates. A little snow isn't going to hurt nobody. Okay, let's get it on, folks. Just like that. And I'm going to start the meat probe here. Let's see about that far in there, right through the middle here. There we go. All right, let's close it up and move back later. All right. The internal temp should be 120 right now, so let's go ahead and get this thing off. Pull out the meat probe. Pull off the meat. And I want to get this drip pan out of here too. This is looking pretty good. Got a lot of juice in there, folks. So let's go ahead and turn this into some useful gravy, huh? So what I have here is a fat separator I've used before on my, some of my older videos. A little mesh screen on top to, ke to catch the bigger chunks. I'm going to pour all this through here, separate the fat out of here, and collect just the au jus. Alright, so let's go ahead and uh, let this settle out a little bit and we'll come back. That's what I got here, folks. Was it about uh, one and a three quarter cup or a little over one and a half cups there? So I'm going to pour it off now and I'm going to use that as a, as a little gravy for my potatoes and my uh, rib roast. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's roaring. All right, let's get this on. Let's get it seared up. All right, we're going to turn. Woo! That's hot. All right, let's get it off. <laughs> let's get it off fast. <laughs> All right, let's get you off there. Oh boy, that looks good. All right, let's slice it up. 
All right, the strings are kind of still in here, but I'll pull it out, pull them out as I go. Let's give it a slice here, huh? The end piece is going to be the most well done. And that's actually really good. Even I mean, that's still some pink in there. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Let's get another bigger slice out of here. Oh, look at that crust. Oh boy. Oh. That is like a perfect medium rare, or even, you know, I guess maybe even somewhat medium, but it's, uh, look, it's looking really good. Okay. Yeah, that, that looks, oh man, look at that. Okay, I'm not cutting any more right now. Let's just get a close up of that. Look at that. That is delicious. Oh man, that's, I can't wait to eat some of this. Mmm, look at that. All right, this is cooked very well. I mean, not very well done. I mean, like very well, like to the point where it's perfectly medium rare. Hey, everybody, look who's back. Hello, everybody. Merry Christmas. Our brother Chad. Hey, uh, it's, it's, it's Christmas, obviously. This is why we're doing this. So uh, he's, he's here, and we're going to try a little bit of this roast, huh? Yeah, I can't wait to try this roast. Here, let's try a piece out of here. Let me just cut off. Oh, fact, look at that, it just cut right off. This melts. There we go. Let me go ahead and cut it in half, cut it in half there. You, you take a piece, I'll take a piece. Oh, look at that juice. Oh, yeah. man. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, man. Mmm, the herbs. I mean, the meat, of course, is juicy. And fresh herbs come right through. Real tender. That fresh herbs, though. That thyme and rosemary. It's, it's dripping it's, off my finger. It's a little drippy. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm. It's good. Try it with a little wine. Ah, that's a good pairing. That this is, is a Dodici by Cooper's Hawk. Um, it's a pretty good wine. All right, well, one more bite. So there you go, folks. I can't wait to eat all this. Let's go. We're going to sit down to eat here pretty soon. Got tables all behind the camera here, all set up for, uh, uh, for, for for 10 people, basically. We're ready to chow. This is the last thing on the menu to finish cooking today. Everyone's ravenously hungry, and we're going to go chow. So, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you're new to this uh, channel, please subscribe. And uh, other than that, Merry Christmas, and I'll see you next time. See you. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe.